Hello and welcome to the Helios blog. Whether you're chilling on your couch or in your coffin, make sure to stay tuned with us to keep you entertained. Today, Matthew Hussey discusses dangerous red flags that are too risky to ignore. Let's get into it. The reason she's alone is because she's difficult. Women are not accepting the bare minimum. Women fuck men they respect. All the women who say things like, I'm strong, independent, I don't need no man, like, y'all impress me. Women just gaslight each other and say what they want to hear. If someone tells you, I'm not sure I'm ready, then you, you have to do some calculations. You have to say, okay, I like this person. They're saying they're not sure I'm ready. That's an immediate giant red flag. It's not them saying, by the way, I'm not sure I know you well enough yet. That's fine. <laughs> That's That's, let's get to know each other better then. Yeah. If they're saying, I'm not sure I'm ready for a relationship, that is a giant red flag. They are te They're telling you they want to sleep with multiple women at the same time. That's what's happening there. Telling you today, I am going to hurt you. In case you didn't hear, I am going to hurt you. They're telling you to your face that you are going to get your heart broken here. So you have to make a decision with that. Do I want to continue to invest in someone who says they're not sure they're ready for a relationship? Mm. Do you really want to do that? Now, you may say if you're 25 and you're like, well, whatever. Yeah. Then I'm just going to have fun and we'll see where this goes. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not judging that. Right. But if you find yourself at a stage in your life where... You if you find yourself past the wall looking to consolidate on a beta male, you probably shouldn't go with guys that say that. That's Matthew's audience, right? Matthew's audience is post-war women who have failed with multiple men who are now looking for the solution, which is, you know, consolidate on the best beta male possible. And Matthew's teaching girls how to do it. You, you know you are ready for something real and you're excited about that. And you've got someone in front of you who isn't just assessing whether you're right for them, but is assessing whether a relationship is even exciting to them. Mm -hmm. Why get into that situation? Why bother? Why spend the time? When someone indeed says, I'm in, that's a green light. When we find that the more energy we put into someone, the more we get back, that's a green light. And too often what I've seen over 15 years of doing this now in people's love lives is that they persist on a red light. These days, I I really start to see it more in terms of just flow. Like, oh, I... Actually, that's not what happens. The girls see that there's a red light and they persist because of the red light. It's not that they're stupid and can't see it. They know that because the guy has given a red light, it means he must have other options. If he has other options, it means that he must be more attractive than the average man. And that's why they stay with him. It's almost a requirement in 2023 for a guy to start with this red light. I'm like, I'm, I'm this river that's just moving, right? I'm, I'm always just moving forward. And along the way, I sometimes hit a rock. And instead of personalizing the rock and what the rock thinks of the water, I instead just see it as a rock. I might actually just say, well, okay, this, this is representing a stop right now. I'm going to move around this. That distinction, although it's a, it's a very, very simple one when you hear it, is one that a lot of us aren't making emotionally. We're not making it in our behaviors, we are exhausting ourselves trying to move on a red light. In the process, we end up resenting the person, we end up resenting how much time we're losing, how much energy was wasted and how much pain was created. When someone says that they're not ready. Matthew is talking as though girls are, you know, logical human beings, but they're not. So because they're not, you can't expect them to act as though they're rational human beings when making these relationship decisions. They're doing it off of their instinct. And their instinct says, he has lots of options. He's attractive. Stick with him. 
Don't change, guys. For a relationship, that's not just a red flag about that person. It's a green light in another direction. It's a signal that you should take your persistence, take your energy, take the drive to find a love that is worthy of your investment and direct that in more productive ways to people that actually have potential. Because the difference between different types of women who are successful and not successful in dating is not that one group avoids dating all of the wrong men and the other one dates on only bad men. Everyone dates the wrong men, right? Anyone is capable of going on a bad date. The difference is the successful people cut them off early. Yeah. That's right, exactly. The successful people, they see that the girl is sketchy and they don't keep seeing her. They cut her immediately. Ah, I understand. She's not a good choice. I'm done. The moment they see a red flag, they're out of there. But that requires a significant level of internal confidence because you've got to know you're worth more than that. So I, I once heard a phrase, relationships often end the way they began. Meaning, whatever ends a relationship, you could have seen in week one mm -hmm. uh -huh. if you were paying attention, but you chose to ignore it. I think you're a smart woman, and I don't believe for one second that those men became the devil six months into the relationship. Mm -hmm. I think you right. saw the stuff that was wrong early on and chose to ignore it. Mm -hmm. So I don't think your problem is with finding great men. I think your problem is a battle with yourself. The next time you meet a guy... Who right, so Matthew is saying to hold accountability and personal responsibility? Wow, say it ain't so. Yeah, uh, that'll make you very unpopular indeed with the girls. Okay. Who is bad for you? You have to be strong enough to not start investing more in that guy just because it's the devil you know and it's harder to go out and meet someone new. Does that make sense? Preach, brother! Excuse me, Hussie! Sorry to interrupt the video, but if you're watching this and you're lo- No, 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 no. We're skipping the ads. Sorry. There is a quite well-known Maya Angelou quote that struck me as being extraordinarily important when it comes to relationships. Uh, she was once famously speaking to Oprah and she said when people show you who they are believe, believe them. them They know themselves much better than you do Right, exactly. That's you're looking in your first few dates, right? What you're actually looking for is You're looking for red flags and when you see them you cut the person you don't keep going because if you keep going, you're going to have a bad time. Okay, let's continue. And she was referring to those moments where people say, I'm a selfish person. I'm not a kind person. I don't think of other people a lot. You know, wh when people, I'm a mean person. When people say those things and we shrug them off, I've had that on first dates. I've had people go like, right. I, I'm just really mean. I can be just so, I can just be so nasty. When someone tells us. If a girl says this on the first date, that's a giant red flag. Look for it. And if she doesn't stop, right? Probably means she actually is mean. Cut her. I'm I'm a mean person. I'm selfish. I'm unkind. I'm I, I don't think of other people. I'm not looking for something. When we ignore that, it's at our own peril. Indeed. Mm. Because they're telling us something about themselves, and we have to assume they have no reason to lie to me right now. Yeah. Right. So if someone says they're jealous, they don't surprise you by never being jealous. You go, oh, you said you were jealous, but you're never, you're never right. jealous. Indeed. They know themselves much better than you do. So when people say things like that, what, what's going on that we don't heed their warning? Why don't we take that at face value? It's this. You're thinking that they're being modest or whatever. Or, you know, um, you're not thinking that they're being modest. You're like, 
you're going, I don't believe that. I, I, th my first impression of you is this. Therefore, I believe my first impression over your own impression of yourself. Idea that our job when we feel something intensely for somebody is to just keep loving them. But you don't just have one job in life. Loving someone or showing love, giving love in life is only one of our jobs. Indeed. The other job is to protect ourselves. In a boxing ring, what does the ref say? At the beginning of every fight, there's the same line that gets said from every boxing referee in every fight that ever happens. Looks at both boxers and says, protect yourself at all times. When, at a certain point in a fight, a referee determines that one of the fighters is no longer capable of protecting themselves. The fight is they're done. they're punch drunk, they're not putting their arms up anymore, they're not guarding punches. They are just taking a beating that's putting them in, in genuine peril, genuine danger, and could be causing serious long-term harm. That referee stops the fight. Protect right. yourself at all times. Right, and so why, Matthew's making the point here, like why not break off things before it gets to the protect yourself at all times point, before it becomes that problem that's destructive for your whole life, right? And when the fighter can no longer protect themselves, they stop the fight. The problem in love is that there is no referee Indeed. that comes along and stops the fight right. if you're no longer protecting yourself. That's right. Your job is to be that referee. Your job is to be both the fighter and the referee right. in that fight. Exactly, exactly. You need to be... You're basically in a street fight, except the, the thing that's at stake is... Well, really, it is your life. Because your relationships are some of the most important decisions you'll ever make, right? If you marry the wrong girl, right? If you marry a girl and, and you choose poorly, that will be just as bad as losing a street fight. You'll get beat up. Except it's not going to be a quick death. It's going to be a slow, painful death. Very slow, very painful. Very interesting analogy. And if you get to a point where you can no longer protect yourself, if you get to a point where you realize, I'm just taking a beating, emotionally, I'm spiritually, my soul is taking a beating in this relationship, your job is to stop the fight and remove yourself from the ring. If you want to know someone's intentions, watch their actions, not their words. Classic. That's one of the most classic RP tenets is do not watch their words. Watch their actions. Unless what they're telling you is difficult for them to say. When we're trying to make any kind of a sale in life, we want to say all of the things that are going to help us make that sale. If, in the course of that sales presentation, someone tells you something undesirable, unwelcome, something that could cost them the sale, what they're saying in that moment should be given particular attention. In that case, we shouldn't be blindly looking at their actions and what they invest in us. We should be paying attention to the small print. I think of it like a, a pharmaceutical ad when someone is trying to sell you on a pill that's going to take away some pain or ailment that you have and it shows you this bright meadow and happy people and after all of that powerful emotional good feeling it reads you as quickly as possible the small print of how this drug is going to make you want to kill yourself ask your doctor today about Kavorka. side effects may include making you want to kill yourself i think of Right, exactly. So the point is, and that's, that's uh, ultimately what, that's ultimately what, um, like, NPD girls or BPD girls are like, right? 
love bombing and all the attention in the world and every good thing you could possibly imagine, right? And then it goes horribly wrong. But why did it go horribly wrong? Well, it went horribly wrong because... It went horribly wrong because you weren't paying attention to the fine print. It was there, but it was hidden. What someone's selling you when they tell you they don't want a relationship as being like that. It's like a commercial for a relationship where someone's walking you through the scenes. Here's us going to a movie. Here's us in a park having a picnic. Here's a moment where I confide in you with something vulnerable and aren't we connected in this moment? And then after all of these relationship-esque scenes that make you feel so invested comes a small print where someone says, Warning, this romance comes without a title. We'll never call you girlfriend, just not ready for a relationship and not looking for anything serious right now. That's the small print. Because right, exactly. I'm not looking for anything serious. I'm not interested in you, really. Um, uh, yeah. It's, um, it's being done with the purpose of getting what they want out of you. And when, once they have it, then they're gone. Right? That's, that's the point. Because when somebody is telling you, I don't want anything serious, amidst doing all of the right things, or they're telling you, I don't want a relationship, even though they're behaving as if you're already in a relationship, what they're saying requires effort to say. It may sabotage the very attention they are trying to get. That means it was inconvenient for them to say. And if it was inconvenient for them to say, if it was something that could cost them the sale, then it's something that should be given extra attention over and above their actions. Last week, Jameson and I had a little dalliance with the Fifty Shades Darker trailer. Tell me what he has that we like, besides money. Muscles. Oh, drama. <laughs> we spoofed it. Here's what you thought of it. Alicia says, oh, here goes Mr. Hussey, AKA Mr. Vanilla, making fun of the Fifty Shades again. Shake my head. Right. Now, here's why girls love the Fifty Shades series. Girl who's a wallflower, who's totally, you know, just an average girl, a nobody, gets random billionaire to focus solely on her and, and be one-on-one -on -one with her, be monogamous with her and, and spend all his resources on her. And he's jacked and uh, good looking and 30 something and so on. It's like a imp total impossibility, right? That these human beings don't exist. But the point is, it's a fantasy, right? And, uh, you know, their relationship is consensual or not. More not than consensual. But, uh, you know, they don't seem to care about that. Uh, it's, you know... It's, uh, it's fine. Alright, let's continue. Wait, so is she saying vanilla is a bad thing? Yeah, like, um, like simple vanilla is boring in bed. Or just it simple, it doesn't make it boring. I'll be honest, Matt, I've never seen you this defensive about a comic. <laughs> defensive how? You haven't seen me in bed. I see. No one has. Just because it's simple doesn't make it boring. Oh. Oh, is it cold in here or is it just my penis? And Christina says, I absolutely adore everything you do, Matthew Hussey. But let us women have our fantasies. What's so wrong with that? Well, Christina, nothing, actually. But I think... There's nothing wrong with fantasy, but a lot of girls believe that, like, the fantasy is the reality, right? Like, if the guy isn't exactly like, uh, what's his name? Christian Grey. Well, then he's not good enough for me. Don't settle, queen. And uh, then they wonder, why am I alone with cats and boxed wine? I think it's worth addressing that there are two fantasies going on in this movie. One is the transgressive BDSM, out of the ordinary sexual acts that many of us don't vocalize in our everyday life. Or maybe even fantasies sexually that we don't talk about with our partner, which is equally sad, I think. The second fantasy 
is one that is potentially more harmful in real life. And in the context of what we talk about every week, I think it's worth indulging. And that fantasy is the fantasy of changing somebody. This relationship that is depicted in Fifty Shades is one between a woman who wants something the guy is not prepared to give and is going out of her way to invest her time and energy into changing him. Yes, she may be curious about the sexual acts that he's offering, but her curiosity about transgressive sex is his obsession. It's not her obsession. And the reason she indulges it to the extent that she does, unless you feel like I've got this wrong, is that she wants more with him. There is literally a moment in the first movie where Christian has talked about all of the things that he won't do. He won't sleep in the same bed as her. He won't go on dates with her. He won't have a normal romantic relationship. And she justifiably says to him, well, what do I get out of this? To which he replies, you get me. Perhaps one of the most narcissistic Right, exactly. Uh, th that is actually what narcissists say, right? You get me and that should be enough, right? To, like, wh what's wrong with you that, that you wouldn't think that that's enough? Yeah, that's about right. Responses someone can possibly give. Saying on one hand, I will meet none of your needs. And on the other hand, I want you to meet all of my needs and demands. I don't want to seem like on the other side, I'm siding with all of the people that suggest that this kind of sex is wrong. Because if two people go into that thinking this is horny, this is fun, whatever, I don't care about that. In fact, I would go as far as to say that if she didn't want to do any of that stuff with him, she wouldn't she be, would into be him. the wrong person for him. Right, See, exactly. a great relationship is one where Christian Grey meets Anastasia and says, hey, I'm into lots of weird kinky shit. Are you up for it? And she says, yeah, I yeah, am. all right. By the way, I'm into romance and going to see movies and sleeping in the same bed and having an intimate emotional relationship. Are you OK with that? And he says, yeah, that sounds great. And then they have an amazing relationship where they meet each other's needs. Right. If either one of them exactly. can't meet that criteria for each other, they're probably the wrong person. And this isn't me bashing Fifty Shades, it's entertainment. What I'm concerned about is the real life version of this that people play out. Men and women alike, they go into things compromising on their deepest needs and desires and standards just because they want the person in front of them. So for Anastasia... There's a lot of girls that are like that. They see Chad, and they would rather have Chad than have a loser who would give them a fulfilling emotional relationship. So just throw the fulfilling emotional relationship out the window, and are like, no, I want Chad. And that's it. This entire relationship is predicated on her fantasy that this man will change to become what she wants, which is just about the most dangerous bet anyone can make in a relationship. I call this bet the one day wager. The one day wager. Trading in your time, energy, emotions and intimacy on the hope that the person you're giving it to will one day become what you want them to be. I'm not- Yeah, right, exactly. Basically, they're like, I'm gonna change Chad. And because they, like, because Chad knows that, like, the reason you're with him is because you wanna change him, then they don't change and you stay with him forever and they, then they can have you for as long as they want without giving you anything you want, basically. I'm not saying that the one day wager is wrong, but it is really, really, really risky. Everybody Indeed. has a story of somebody they know that held out for somebody to change, change a trait about themselves or make a bigger commitment, marry them, suddenly want kids, whatever it might be, who are now in despair, depression, really tumultuous places internally because they feel like they gave so much time to somebody 
who never changed. And if they'd have paid attention to the warning signs along the way, they realized they could have seen that for themselves. Right, exactly. Now, this isn't to say that people never change because they do. I know that people change because I watch them change all the time as a result of the advice that we give, as a result of the inspiration that people draw from our material. I see these changes day in, day out. But that's somebody who is motivated internally to change. That's somebody who's made a decision that they want to change. There is a difference between having the motivation to change and the person we're with making a decision and having the motivation to change. And I'm gonna leave you with a line right now that is gonna sum up that distinction. Consider how hard it is to change yourself and you'll have- Right, exactly. You'll have no chance of changing others unless they wanna change themselves. That's right. It's useless to try. It's why you need to, basically if the girl is not the kind of girl that you actually like, you shouldn't be with her. Just go to a new girl. That's the idea. Okay. Actually, quite a good, uh, quite a good Matthew Hussey video. Good job, Matthew. I think, uh, I think he did not too bad here. All right, let's end the video there. Hit the like, hit the sub, hit all for notifications. Drop me a donation like Hunter M, Adrian, Tom, and Bobby, and Dylan. Shoutouts to you. Most recent purchase of Strategist Guide Seduction and quotes to live by. Thank you. My books can be bought at bit.ly slash Helios Books. Go to my Patreon at patreon.com slash the Helios blog. And if you're interested in coaching, message me at the Helios blog at gmail.com. All right. Thank you so much for listening, guys, especially if you listen to the end. I really do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time.